on the dusty landscape of Chorus 5, the Admech and the Imperial forces, an Archaeotech excavation gone awry as the Dark Eldar launch a dawn raid to take prisoners, take information, and live off the dying screams of the foe. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to another Scardcast Battle Report. Today we're playing Dawn Raid, a mission from the old Battle Missions book. You can see a picture down in the description if you want to link to it. And we are going to play with the Admech, Space Wolves, and Custodes facing off against the Dark Eldar Raid. This is a Highlander mission, and it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. Will Archon Skari get hand-to-hand, -hand, face to face with the Admech Warlord and have his Husk Blade suck his soul from his body? Or will the Admech, with support of his Imperial allies, fend off the attack and safeguard critical information that he is digging up from eons past? We've got Billy on the channel today. Hello. Hello, Billy. <laughs> and we're going to have an absolute blast. We'll come back after deployment. I hope you like the, the cool uh, table as well. Let's dive right in. The Dark Eldar descend on the Archaeotech dig on Koros 5. The fastest elements of the Dark Eldar raid arrive first. So that's all the troops in dedicated transports and fast attack. So you've got the Scourge, Cabalite Warriors, the Witches ready to get it to grips with the enemy, the, the howling gladiatorial insults, and the Reaver jet bikes ready to bring around the flank. So the way this mission works, we've got the Archaeotech dig over here with, uh, we decided to modify the mission a little bit and get the HQs and the elites uh, deployed, which meant that they're, they're digging. So that's the whole point of them being there. So we've got one objective here, one objective here, one objective in the middle, and one objective by the water supply, by the old Mechanicum building. And it is whoever has the most objectives at the end of the game wins the game. And that's it. That's it. It's just an objective grab mission. Cool thing is, it's night fight every turn. But at the end of every player turn, we roll the dice. And on a six, the sun has come up and night is over as it is a dawn raid. Okay. Um, other than that, I ha get to roll the dice, being the Dark Eldar player. <laughs> There's no seize initiative, but if I roll a one, he goes first. And if I roll anything else, the Dark Eldar go first. So, let's see what the fates have in store. William, <laughs> any comments before I roll this fateful dice? Bring on that one. There you go, Bring okay. Sweet, sweet one. <laughs> and what does the fates say? It is a five. The Dark Eldar will go first. But it is an objective-based game, which means he's going to get last grab on the objectives. <laughs> so let's see how this goes as, with a howl, the Dark Eldar raiders surge forth towards the unsuspecting Archaeotech dig. Let's begin. And here is the force of Archmagos Binos. He is, of course, leading a dig, helped by his heavy combat servitors. And knowing that there was Xenos afoot, he's brought some Imperial forces to support him in the dig. So, um, in high orbit, there's the Custodes uh, Battle Barge, Emperor's Wrath, and then the Space Wolves that were um, around the plains, um, just waiting for a distress call, which did come. So, Billy, tell me a little bit about your army. Um, well, we have the Breachers and the uh, the Destroyers. They're really heavy hitters. They have um, not the greatest stats in a lot of cases for uh, combat, but they they can take a lot of punishment. They can absorb a lot. Yeah. So I really like those, and especially with this kind of um, 
<clears throat> scenario that we have set up, I like these guys more so than bringing the Skatari because mm -hmm. they'd be more able to withstand the the elements. I would I would think anyway. Okay, I could be wrong in the fluff on that. And uh, you obviously, if you're going to be worried about being attacked, you want to have the Space Wolves involved, per peerless hunters. Um, so I have the Thunder Wolves and the Wolf Lord, and also you have to bring the Iron Priest because you have the Mechanicum there. There's the Alliance. That's right. And so the idea is that this is a very small elite strike force army. Very cool. And then the Custodes, we're checking them out. Just a unit of Custodes coming in with some shields. They can deep strike. They've got some cool weapons. And they're two wounds apiece. Eternal so warrior. yeah, let's see. Uh, let's see how the Dark Eldar fare against this elite army in the wastelands of Koros V. The Dark Eldar Cabal of the Deadly Mist, led by Archon Skari, decided to launch a dawn raid on the Arch Magos' forces as he was doing an Archaeotech excavation dig deep in the wastelands of Koros V. And this was the force that participated in such an assault. Leading the assault, we have Archon Skari himself, the arrogant Dark Eldar Archon, with his shadow field and all that good stuff. If you want to check the lists for both armies, make sure you check the links down below to see the full army lists. He has brought a troop of his elite Cabalite warriors, and they have come to the forefront with some cool heavy gear. We also have In the Shadows four demonic -y mandrakes. Maybe that's why the Custodes are present. We shall see. Then we've got troops. We've got five Cabalite warriors with a blaster in a dual cannon venom. It's pretty straightforward. And nine witches with a Hecatrix and an Agonizer and a raider as well. Then in Fars Attack, we've got five Scourge, four Heat Lances. I just finished up these guys' armor. Really looking how they're turning out. A unit of Reaver Jet Bikes with two Heat Lances and a Razor Wing with the Cannon. In Heavy Support, we've got a Talos and a Ravager with Night Shields and Lances. And this is 1,250 points of Highlander Dark Elder. Dark Eldar Turn 1 saw the Dark Eldar Vanguard contact with the enemy. So I moved and turbo boosted this raider behind this hill. I've turbo boosted the Reaver jet bikes into a position to threaten the center of the board. The Scourge have moved and ran to hide behind these crates, while the Venom just pushed back and used its double splinter cannon to take out one of the Grav gun servitors. And they passed their morale test. So, the Arc Magos has been taken by surprise. He has now voxed High Command for reserves and he hopes that they get here on time to stem the tide of the Dark Kin raid. Will it be enough to hold the objectives that are needed for the war effort or will the Xenos defeat the Empire once more? On to the Mechanicum's Warlord Imperial Guard Custodes. Turn one. The Arch Magos, seeing that a trap was sprung, has decided to try and defend his precious servitors, which are the only heavy support available to his army other than the Custodes. He has voxed a signal of distress, and these little uh, defense lines here provide a 5-plus cover save when you shoot through them into the defensive zone, because that's a perimeter fence. Um... And he has declared his sh Shroud Psalm because his Warlord trait means that he counts as having full number of units for any Psalms he wants to do, which means they all stealth and shrouded. So it's going to be very tough for my shooting to do anything against them. Might have to try and dislodge them with some shooting. And I know the witches and the reavers who jinked and survived all shooting against them are very, very happy to... Um, Try get into combat, so we'll see what happens there. <laughs> Other than that, let's see if my reserves jump the gun and come in before anything else happens. So we've got Archon Skari decides to arrive with his <coughs> Trueborn. We've got um, the Razorwing 
decides to arrive, we've got the Mandrakes that are outflanking. They stay hidden in the shadows. And yeah, <laughs> and I believe that's it. Oh no, then we've got the Ravager arrives and the Talos arrives. Okay, so everything is arrived except for the Mandrakes. They don't want to show up, apparently. On to turn two. Turn two for the raiding party of the Dark Eldar saw pretty much all the reserves show up and converge on the beleaguered <laughs> um, um, cult mechanicus digging force with the space wolf iron priest as well. Um, so I decided that I need to try and tie some stuff up in close combat. The reason I didn't charge them with the jet bikes is because they have AP5 close combat weapons, which would have made really short work of my jet bikes. But we'll talk about that in the Tactile Corner, which is a separate video that I do that I release later in the week. So stay tuned for that. It might even be in the description down below. Um, and then I charge the witches in. Uh, they fail their charge range after looting, losing a model um, to Overwatch. And then the witches charge in and put two wounds on the Dominus. Oh my goodness, two wounds. Uh, and uh, but they passed their morale test and the witches did not run away because it's of good invulnerable saves and good feel no pain saves as well for power from pain then we had the um, all the shooting was essentially ineffective two plus save behind the little defense line with shroud psalm was incredible <laughs> um, so other than that the archon and his trueborn have moved up the cabalite warriors have moved up the razor wing did not spend any of his missiles, just moved up. And the Scourge have moved up as well into defensive commanding positions. So we'll see if the night fight is over. And it is not. It needs a six for it not to be over. So it continues to be the dead of night. And Billy's going to roll for his reserves. All right, so for the Thunderwolf Kavanaugh, Wolf Lord. They... Arrive. It's hard to see, but that is a five. <laughs> um, the lone wolf. He arrives. He's deep striking in his Terminator armor. And then lastly, the Custodes. Nope. They decide to hold because Emperor's Retribution is not needed just yet. So, will the Space Wolves turn the tide of battle? Will they save the beleaguered warlord of this digging expedition? Or will the Dark Eldar take slaves and servitors, which then they retrofit to actually feel pain, back to the Dark City? We shall see after this. Hmm. Space Wolves turn two saw the servitors and the Iron Priest charge into bloody combat with the witches to try and break the combat. But because of their plus one strength, they were strength six, I passed pretty much every save I was required to make and the witches are plus one strength thanks to their combat drugs which allowed me to kill one servitor he didn't want to risk the one last wound on his warlord <laughs> <laughs> so it, the thunderwolves have advanced and ran six inches so I have one turn the dark eldar scary archon has one turn to deal with the thunderwolves before his entire center gets completely destroyed and the lone wolf deep struck here his mission in life is to kill big things so he's going beelining it for my um talos but i really need to try and deal with these thunder wolves so he's not really a priority so we'll see what happens that might come to bite me in the bum later in the game but i do have my mandrakes will they arrive yes they do that's who the custodies were waiting for the mandrakes <laughs> and it uh night fight is still on it is still the night we have not rolled a six yet to stop night fight okay moving on to the next dark eldar turn three and the combat is bloody but still a stalemate i killed the last of the grav servitors and the Warlord fail, uh, passed his one armor save he was required to make because my witches have been absolutely phenomenal. Meanwhile, this challenge over here with my Hecatrix and the Iron, the Wolf Priest, uh, the Iron Wolf Priest or whatever, um, they're, it's just a slobber knocker fest. They, they haven't done anything to each other. And I only killed one Thunderwolf. And I, I'm blocking them with the jet bikes here. But 
this could be very dire, very, very dire for the Dark Eldar if those Thunder Wolves just go unopposed. <laughs> uh, in combat, my Talos charged in to the Lone Wolf and took a wound and did no damage, failing to hit with almost all his attacks. While my Archon took his Trueborn, commandeered the Witch Raider, and now he's in a position to then strike. So, is it night fight still? <laughs> It is, and do the custodies arrive on turn three? They do. The Emperor's Finest have arrived, and it could be at no better time than when everything hangs in the balance. Moving on to turn three. Okay, so the Imperial turn three. Wow, what a turn. And with crackling energies, a canticle to the Electromancer essentially murdered all my witches. He noticed he should have done it last turn, but um, he completely forgot, and I don't really play against them lot enough to really remember that sort of thing. But needless to say, my witches just died horrible, hideous death. <laughs> that one girl, she's running away right now. My Warlord Traders, all units within 12 are fearless, so I'm hoping to make her fearless, and uh, she'll go back into the fight. In other news, in hand-to-hand -hand combat, the Lone Wolf took another wound off the Talos and took nothing in return. And in a fateful, crazy crushing of the flank, my Mandrakes put two wounds on the battle leader. Two wounds out of three saves. It was crazy. And then the Reaver jet bikes lost two of their number, but did put three wounds on the Thunderwolves. So killed one, and, and only the Thunderwolf is left alive with one wound remaining. And then they fail their hit and run. Um, so they are stuck in combat. It is turn four, and there is nothing but death and destruction. The Custodes have arrived, pinpointing a deep strike to target the raider with the Archon and put two hull points with their holy bolters. Meanwhile, I wanted to charge this unit here with my Archon, but that Electromancy spell is <laughs> <it's> really horrible. <laughs> so I don't really want to charge in unless I really do some damage there. And we're moving on to the fourth turn of the game. Wow, this has been really entertaining so far, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. What will happen? Let me know down in the description. Yeah. A Dark Eldar turn four. Shot a lot into the Custodes, but their armor held true with the Trueborn and the Venom. And I only killed one and put one wound on the squad leader. In combat, the Witch, she became fearless thanks to the Archon, moved up, charged in over here. Um, the Lone Wolf did kill the Talos, taking his last wound, and the Witch is tied in combat with him. I charged in with the Scourge because they have a better armor save to help them against the Electromancy powers, and um, I did one wound in combat. And then shooting, I killed one and did one wound. So they both have one wound left, and then the Archon is in a challenge against the Iron Priest with his Husk Blade. In combat, this Thunderwolf... Wounded Thunderwolf <laughs> uh, killed two of the Reavers and he's locked in combat with the last Reaver jet bike. And we're moving on to turn four. It's all about the objectives at the end of the game. Is it night fight over yet? It is! The sun comes up as the custodies arrive. Which means I no longer get plus one save. <laughs> so now the custodies are going to try and wreak retribution against the Trueborn. We shall see what happens because he still has a good hand in the game. My Razorwing did fly off the board. It is coming around for a second pass of the battlefield. Turn four. What will happen in this combat over here? And what will happen with the flyer? coming in to deal with some pesky armor 2 plus guys. Toughness 5, Eternal Warrior. It's crazy. Turn 4. 
Wow, what a turn. We had the Custodes charge in and blow this Raider sky high, but the Trueborn got out and they're not pinned. Meanwhile, the Lone Wolf just smacked that witch with his hammer. <laughs> she died. <laughs> um, but in contrast, this Reaver Jet Bike killed the Thunder Wolf with one wound. And in combat, I lost all my Scourge. My Archon did kill the Priest in combat, which adds plus one to his strength thanks to the Soul Trap. So he's now strength four with a Soul Trap. And oh my goodness, we're going into turn five. Could be the end of the game. What is going to be of this game right now? There's battle on this flank over here with this objective still up for grabs. There's battle over here and we have no idea how this is going to end. We've got the high ground still uncontested with the Trueborn looking at it eagerly, but definitely being followed by some <laughs> custodies and this flank on this side with the Kabbalite warriors ready to take that as well. Wow, this has been incredible. Let's see what happens as we move into turn five and it's now daylight. The, the, the battle is joined and there's been a lot of destruction. One of the most entertaining games I've had in a very long time. Let's move on to the next. Turn five for the Dark Eldar. Wow, what a turn. My Archon failed to do any damage, but he is locked in a fateful challenge with the enemy warlord. They are fighting to the death. My shadow field has held, but who knows how long that will hold. <laughs> the Venom did move into a boost after disembarking the Kabalite Warriors, and they ran onto that objective, safe from retaliation for the time being, securing that objective. The Reaver Jet Bike is threatening the middle objective, while the Trueborn have moved to move block the custodians as much as they can because of the hill. It's going to be hard for them to move up and do that sort of thing. And then over here, everything that I had left just poured firepower into the Lone Wolf, and I only did one wound. <laughs> he is very much still alive, and he's eyeing this poor, poor Ravager. <laughs> so we're moving on to turn five. Let's see what happens. Uh, can the Cult Mechanicus save the Archaeotech Excavation, or will the Dark Eldar be successful in their daring Dawn Raid? I'm, like, enjoying the hell out of this. Turn five. Wow, the Imperial forces. He tried to kill this unit with shooting to deny the objective, but I've passed all three of my jinx saves against heavy bolt of fire, and he needed a 10-inch charge to get up and go through the terrain, and he rolled an eight. That's a nine. It was a nine. No, it was, it was, was it a nine? No, it was an eight. No, it was, it was an eight. eight. It was so close. Meanwhile... This guy over here charged and blew that up. That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> he just jumped on board, murdered the whole crew. Just imagine just him going berserk. He's been an absolute tank this game. It's been fantastic. In combat, my shadow field has held true again. And I have failed to do damage with my husk blade in the challenge. Okay, so does the game continue if... The game is over. That's contested because those servitors are obsec. That's mine. That's his, because they can take objectives, correct? And that's mine. So I have two objectives to his one objective. Oh my goodness. I'm going to let Billy roll the, the fateful dice on a three plus. There is another turn. Oh, it goes on. To turn six, let's see what happens as the razor wing that forgot to come in last turn comes in this turn. <laughs> okay. Turn six. The razor wing came in, guns blazing, and uh, with the help of the venom over there, took two of the custodies down. Each one has one wound left. The reaver jet bike is still on the high ground, while the Trueborn 
moved up to take objective over here and did kill the lone wolf in a fit of glorious death after taking out like four times his point value he has finally fallen <laughs> in combat the shadow field holds true yet again and even though Archon Skari, the whole point of this raid was to capture this guy right here, <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been able to kill him with his husk blade or incapacitate him. And the Cabalite Warriors are back here, pretty safe from retaliation. So let's move on to the Imperial turn six. Let's see what they come up with at the end of the game. <laughs> Imperial turn six, the Custodes in a fit of glory, charged in, murdered all the true born, because that's kind of what they do. <laughs> Consolidated, and they have taken the objective in the stockyards. But because I still have a live jet bike, and I have that objective, I still control one more objective than he does, as this one is contested back here with objective secured troops. And the Archon Shadowfield continues to hold. While he is doing some damage, the AP3 is not proving strong enough to get through the, the two plus carapace crazy armor of the Dominus. So even though Archon Skari is this close to his grasp and his forces have a tactical superiority within the game, what he came for might not be within reach. So will it go on to turn seven on a four plus? It continues. And it continues. <laughs> this will be the last and final turn. What will the fate of Archon Skari be? What will the Custodes do? Will they survive the firepower? Or will they die? And, oh man, stay tuned. Turn 7, Dark Elder. And with the death of the Dominus and the fall of the Custodes, the game is over. What a crazy game. It went till the very end. In the Custodes, just withstanding wave after wave of splinter fire and finally two shots from the Venoms got through and knocked the two last wounds, their poison coursing through their holy veins. The Cabalite warriors pillaging over here. <laughs> the Reaver jet bikes surviving from the very beginning of the game to take this objective in the middle of the board. And the Venom being fateful Venom. While finally, Archon Skari in a challenge, the Dominus failed. One fateful save. And his husk blade turned him into dust. Well, I don't know how that works, though, because he's mostly mechanical. A couple bits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, somehow it works. <laughs> and the razor wing has moved up. Other than that, it is a dark Eldar victory. And they head forth with a very, very nail-biter of the game until very end of the game. Billy? Thanks a lot for the game, sir. You're very welcome. Do you have any comments? Any feedback? Any tales of woe? If, if you have a two-up save, you're going to fail it at the most inopportune <laughs> moments. I kind of, I know my shadow fields, I usually fail the first one, but every once in a while, the shadow fields just don't fail. But yes, right at the end, the one failed save. Because had, had um, we'll talk about this in the tactical corner which will be a future video. But had the Archon died, even on that last turn, you had the Graviton guys come over and deal with the Venom, which is a very good possibility. Mm -hmm. And then the Dominus could have moved up and probably dealt with that jet bike, which means that you would have controlled this and the Dominus would have just charged in. I probably wouldn't oh, have yeah. shot, just charged in, taken that, and that would have been two objectives to my one. And then you would have won. Yeah. On turn seven. Wow, what a crazy game. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, thanks a lot for tuning in, guys. I hope you enjoyed this cool battle report. It's one of the most entertaining games I've had in a long time. This is what the hobby is about. Bring cool stuff, forge a narrative, 
and bring like nicely like just models just bring your stuff and make a cool looking table i hope you enjoyed it if you did enjoy it make sure you subscribe like share it tell your friends about um the games and um yeah if you'd like to help out check out the patron page every little bit helps and um check the links down below for more like lists and other stuff this is Scarry, your grateful host. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next week on another Scardcast Battle Report. Scarry, out. <laughs>